my dear students of second year i am raghavendra pratap and today i am here with a fresh startup of fifth unit in this video we will cover some of the contents and we'll go on to cover rest in the next consecutive video all of you will get the notification of my next videos as soon as i will upload so for that stay tuned with me one thing more i want to highlight here i'm so happy to get your comments and regular views which shows me my efforts in the right direction thank you very much for that one thing more which is very much important for me to highlight here again which i generally do in my all videos that is take care of yourself this is such a crisis in which you have to take care of yourself and your family members as well so let's start with the fifth unit the name of the fifth unit is dimension of oral communication and voice dynamics very much simple this unit is in this unit we will discuss the different aspects of oral communication and the different aspects of voice dynamics let's move ahead to the first content the first content is mechanism of speech so do not worry about this technical word which i used here as mechanism so this mechanism of speech is all about the production of speech sound so both the things are same okay so this production of speech sound follows a very complicated process and this process is explained in six different points one by one we will go through these all six points or six different steps okay so first of all a concept is formulated in the linguistic form in the speaker's brain means this is the first step one speaker one speaker gets a concept in the mind in a linguistic form then that concept in a form of a message again i am highlighting please look at the cursor that concept in a form of a message is transmitted to the organs of speech by the nervous system very much simple the message is transmitted to the organs so that organs can produce the sounds the organs of speech the third step the organs of speech move to produce the speech sound they start producing the sound for that they caused some disturbance to the air and because of that different air pressure comes in picture at the fourth stage these sound waves means the disturbance of air these sound waves of different air pressure strike the listener's ear at the fourth stage very much simple these sound these sound waves of different air pressure means different air pressure of sound sound waves strike the listener's ear and at the fifth stage listener's ear receive these waves which are conveyed to his brain by the nervous system the same process follows but in a reverse order after receiving the waves listener sends those all with the help of nervous system to the mind and at the final stage at the final stage brain trans brain interpreted or decoded that message so this is all about the mechanism of speech or we can say production of speech sound these all six different steps are briefed on the next slide in a form of a graph let's go hard to understand this thing and one thing more we will understand which is written here in black color where i'm moving my cursor so let's move ahead to the second slide this is graph of mechanism of speech so first concept to the brain of speaker then it transmitted to the speech organs speech organs caused the disturbance of air then it then it transmitted to the listener's ear then it transmitted to the listener's brain with the nervous system and ultimately brain decodes the message in this complete process the thing which is very much important to know that is considered as the most essential thing to maintain in the communication that listener and speaker must share the common linguistic code again i am repeating it is very much essential to share common linguistic codes by the speaker and listener this is the last thing which was which is which is very much important so let's move ahead to the next slide 
one thing more about the mechanism of speech production to be highlighted that is the five different spots so normal normal speech depends on proper functioning of five essential mechanism spot these are five essential mechanism spots which comes in the picture to produce the sounds what these five steps are sorry what these five spots are the first spot the motor the second one vibrator the third one resonator the fourth one enunciator or articulator and the last one is initiator we'll understand what these five spots are and what are all what all things comes at this stage at these spots the motor is all about the lungs and associated muscles that supply that supply air that is the motor the vibrator is all about the vocal cord that gives pitch to the tone the third point resonator the resonator it consists of oral nasal pharyngeal it consists of resonator consists of oral nasal pharyngeal cavity cavity and paranasal sinus so this is the third spot the fourth spot is the enunciator art enunciator or articulator it includes lips tongue palate teeth whatever there is in our mouth and the last one is initiator which is the motor area of brain where the things the concept the message is decoded so these are five different spots of mechanism of speech production okay let's move ahead to the next slide this is another con content of this unit that is code and content of communication let's understand this what is code if i'm not wrong all of you must know what is code is what code is code is something which is a group of symbol which transmits something again i am highlighting code is something code is something a group of symbol which transmits something and what transmit what what is transmitted that is content so there is a interrelation between this code and content so this this uh, this heading is code and content of communication skills the essentiality of these two so what code is we will understand so code code has code has been defined as a group of symbol what what i said earlier so group of symbols which is structured in a way that is meaningful to other means whatever you have in your mind you are transmitting you are communicating you are transferring that in such a way in such a symbol which is meaningful to other that is code in another another definition we will understand this code is a system of rules to convert information into another form of a representation very much simple this definition too is means code is named here as a system of rules means code is all about some different rules which helps us to transfer or convert information in such a form which is understandable to other so the same is written here code is a system of rules to convert information into another form of representation the third way to understand the same thing code a particular way to present something very much simple with the least minimal words very much simple definition with the least minimal words that is a particular way to present something when you have a particular way to present something that is code and that particular way can be a group of symbol that particular way can be a, a group of sign whatever you have there when you are presenting some when you are presenting something that is the code that is the code so after understanding these three definition first one is group of symbol which is in, which is structured in a way that is meaningful to other code is a system of rules to convert information into another form of representation or the third one the simplest one a particular way to present something one thing comes in picture and what is that one thing because of these three definitions it is very much clear all the languages are code look at the cursor where i'm moving with the help of these three definition it gets clear all the languages are codes so this is all about the code now 
let's move ahead to the content as i said here when you have some group of codes to transmit some information so the information which is which is there to transmit which is there to transfer which is there to which is there to share that is content means the subject matter which you are transferring with the help of some codes again i am highlighting look at the cursor the subject matter means the content the subject matter which you have which you have with you to transfer in a group of symbol in a group of sign that is content so understand the understand this concept in a form of a definition content is communication means Con content in communication means as any text matter of a document means the text matter which you have in a document that is con content or in a, another way content is what is inside or include in something what is inside means what is briefed what is included that is con content and very much simple understanding which i said earlier as well that is subject matter the subject matter which you have to transfer which you are transferring with the help of some codes that is content so subject matter is all about the content so subject matter which is used to present an idea or thought that is content so i think this is uh, very much clear to all of you about code and content let's move ahead to understand the third point which is stimulus and response now please do not get confused with these two different terms i'm sure all of you are quite aware of this response but a bit but have a bit doubt about stimulus so i'll relate this the response which you gave very much simple understanding i am giving to every one of you the response which you gave comes in picture because of stimulus is it clear again i am repeating stimulus is responsible to give the response stimulus is responsible to give the feedback that is stimulus and response both the terms are interrelated to one another when you are stimulated then only you can give response when you are stimulus then only you can give feedback so stimulus and response in communication we will understand this on this slide so any message or information any message or information that evokes means something which intensify that evokes a response is stimulus in communication how simple this is the thing which i said the same is written here any message or information whatever you have as a message or information you have and that evokes means that that intensifies that gets a response is stimulus in communication where response is defined as a reaction to stimulus is it clear the the thing which i said the same is written here where response is defined as a reaction to stimulus what you get because of a stimulus that is response that is feedback okay so it is expected to have very much little control very much little control over the stimulus components what are what are the stimulus components stimulus components can be the criticism ridicule judgment or opposition when someone is like uh, when someone is uh, showing opposite view you get stimulus when people criticize you get stimulus when people make you in ridicule condition you get stimulus so these all are the stimulus components but one thing is very much important here these all stimulus components are responsible to get the stimulus and stimulus is responsible to get to give the feedback means to give the response but what we can change in this complete process that is a response even when we are getting stimulus again i am highlighting even when we are getting stimulus because of some stimulus components we can control we can change our response this is in our hands stimulus condition will remain same it depends how we are how we are showing our response and feedback to that okay so this is all about the stimulus and response in communication here three points are given as a difference between stimulus and response one by one we will understand these three the difference between stimulus and response the first point is stimulus is an event or condition that initiate a response 
stimulus is that condition stimulus is that event which is responsible to initiate a response but response is the reaction of a stim specific stimulus means when stimulus comes in picture response comes in picture so this is the first one the third the second one is it is a change in environment when it comes stimulus is the change in environment but it is the organism reaction to stimulus this is not this is not something which comes in the environment this is because stimulus comes in picture that's why it comes in it, it comes in picture as reaction and the third point is stimulus varies according to its type of intensity location and duration but response may be physical cellular or it may be behavioral as a example to stimulus and response a car, car horn is the example of stimulus and response coming aside hearing a car horn that is the response which you performed which you show so these three were the basic difference general difference between stimulus and response let's move ahead to the next slide that is encoding and decoding before briefing something about this encoding and decoding please rememorize something when i gave you when i introduced the model of communication there these two different terms were introduced by me encoding and decoding where sender is responsible to encode the message and receiver is re receiver is re receiver is responsible to decode the message means encoding was done by the sender and decoding was done by the receiver so the same understanding we will understand here in a different way so encoding what encoding is a we to form a message in an understandable way means when you are when you are adopting a different way or a certain way to make a understanding clear to others that is called encoding the same is written here a way to form a message that is a way which uh, which you use to form a message so that that can be understandable to other that is encoding literally encoding means the conversion of information in encoding what happens conversion of information of an idea of someone's mind to a physical state of information comprehended to all that is called encoding and decoding is a way to understand a message at, as it is formed is called decoding means decoding is that way which helps you out to understand a message is it clear a way to form a message is encoding a way to understand a message is decoding now understand this in such a way a way to form a message when you are forming a message in understandable way encoding is uh, that when you have a way to understand a message that is decoding and something more about decoding it is the comprehension it is the comprehension to physical state of information which is conversion which is the conversion of information of an ideas of someone minds someone's mind means the same this is all about the thing which is written here is all about the opposite of this one here this was the conversion of information of someone's someone's idea this is the conversion of information of someone's idea in a physical state here this is the comprehension of someone's information this is a con this is the comprehension of physical state of information or the the conversion of information where that is of someone's else this is all about the decoding i think uh, both of these terms are clear to everyone let's move ahead to understand the same in a pictorial form means this these two pictures are shown to depict what encoding and decoding is here encoder encoder is responsible to get a message out from the mind with the help of a mouth a message which comes in the picture and that is received by the ear of the listener and then it transmitted to the mind of the listener and it it gets decoded the same is written here the, the sorry the same is shown here when a is responsible to produce an idea with the mouth it 
reached to the ear of the listener and then transmitted to the mind and that gets decoded so these two pictures are the depiction of encoding and decoding in pictorial form let's move ahead to understand the fifth point means next topic that is pronunciation and communication so what is pronunciation and communication if i'm not wrong all of you know what pronunciation is so what we do with the sounds while forming a word a part of sentence is actually pronunciation and when we use that in communication that is pronunciation in communication with the help of a definition we will understand this pronunciation refers to the way word is spoken means when there is a particular way when there is a particular way where all are supposed to produce the same sound for that that is pronunciation the particular movement actually is responsible to the same sound is it really possible for me is is it really possible to think uh, to to pronounce a word differently by different speakers is it really possible to think means so one of your one of your classmate is pronouncing uh, uh, biology as biology and someone else is pronouncing that uh, biology as uh, something biology or x y z no there is a particular movement of uh, organs which helps us to give a particular sound that is the pronunciation okay so pronunciation refers to the way a word is spoken with a different definition pronunciation are those particular movements which are said the same are brief particular movements of articulators the movement of articulators is specifically arranged to produce certain sound to represent a word means there are some set movements of the organs which we have in a mouth to produce a certain sound which represent a word which represent a letter with its specific sound so with the help of these two definitions it is very much clear one thing i want to highlight here pronunciation in communication is known to every one of you it depends how you understand these two definition and put forth your views in a form of a definition is it clear what i said if you understood this thing if you understood this thing you can form your own definition with your own words okay so understand the importance of pronunciation there are four different points which are given here to show the importance of pronunciation in communication the first one is right pronunciation of words make someone know about your relationship with the language means if someone is pronouncing words letters perfectly as it should be it shows the relationship of that person with the language means right pronunciation helps other people know how good you have the relationship how good you are in that language this is the first important importance the second one is right movement of articulator shows your knowledge of language this is the right pronunciation of word which you gave and which only can comes in picture which only can comes in picture because when you give the right movement to the articulators when you are perfectly moving the articulators to produce a particular sound then only you can produce the right pronunciation of words so both gives the understanding of both gives the understanding your understanding about the language okay so right pronunciation of words makes someone know about your relationship with the language and right movement of articulator shows your knowledge of language the third importance right pronunciation of words of a language gives you idea that when you pronounce accurately again i am saying when you pronounce accurately the idea which you have in your mind to transfer to communicate that gets a support that gets a depth to understand by the person okay so right pronunciation to the words of a language gets your idea a depth and the last one is as a importance right pronunciation helps in communicating more effectively and clearly when you pronounce perfectly when you pronounce accurately 
it helps to communicate your concept your message your idea more effectively and clearly so these few are the importance of pronunciation and communication let's move ahead to understand the next one that is etiquette and pronunciation there are some etiquettes means the different pattern the ways the adoption which must be used in pronunciation so etiquette and pronunciation are those ways which guides us to follow the definite or defined pattern of sounds in a language means it gets us etiquette and pronunciation gets us a gets us to follow a defined pattern of sounds of a language so these are as follows one by one we'll uh, we'll go through all these the first one is follow the articulator pattern of sounds present in the language everyone should follow the articulation pattern of sounds which are the part of that language this is the first etiquette the second one efforts must be made to make every single sound of the language specific the pattern which is specifically attached the movements of articulator which is specifically defined those must be adopted as is the third point opening of mouth as required to exhale the air this is noticed in india most of the people don't move their organs properly to produce the sound this is something which stops the understanding this is something which which comes in a picture as barriers to comprehend your message so it is very much important to open the mouth as much as possible means that is not i am not saying but just open your mouth to to its highest opening no the required opening which is which is required means the 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 requirement of producing that sound must be there to produce so opening of mouth is required to exhale the air this too is a kind of etiquette practice tough sound there are some tough sounds considered in every language so it is very much needed as a etiquette to practice all those tough sounds next one is as a etiquette do not chew while speaking it leads to pronounce incorrectly when you are speaking do not chew anything because you won't be able to produce the sound perfectly in that state do not gulp water while pronouncing means gulping while pronouncing leads to mispronounce the words do not gulp anything during pronunciation during during producing some sounds and the last one is as a etiquette listen the sounds more to pronounce better listen the sounds more as much you will listen the sounds as much you will be able to produce the same sound is it clear means the people who are pronouncing some of the words or some of the sounds incorrectly not because they are they they don't have knowledge of that sound they don't have the knowledge of that language the reason is all of you are means those who are pronouncing wrong who are who are producing wrong sounds they are producing because they hear that as is if you hear wrong you will produce wrong if you hear right you will produce right this is all about the etiquette and pronunciation let's move ahead to the next content that is etiquette in communication so we will cover up to here only in this video about the etiquette in communication as we discuss about the etiquette in pronunciation the same is there in communication when you are communicating something there are some etiquettes must be followed by every receiver and sender what those etiquettes are etiquettes in communication are as important as to have the knowledge of a language means to follow some certain guidelines in communication is as important as the knowledge of a language because when when you will not follow those guidelines you will not be able to continue the conversation so think logically how important this is means 
how important this is it clearly states the same is written here only only this helps to go on the conversation you can go on with the conversation only when you are following some different etiquettes the different the certain etiquettes certain ways of using a language during communication there is a very renowned name peter murphy who says something about the etiquettes in communication he writes it is very much important to give ease to the receivers to the receiver because only that ease will attract further conversation peter murphy says it is one of the most important thing to give ease to your listener if you are not giving that ease to the listener you won't be able to attract the further conversation with him or her is it clear so this is the statement of peter murphy it is very much important to give ease to the receiver because only that ease will attract the further conversation so peter murphy gave us 10 secrets of social etiquettes in communication the first one is don't hijack the conversation when you are communicating with someone you are not supposed to hijack the conversation in any state give people time to speak it is very much necessarily even when you are too much knowledgeable you are supposed to give time to others as well then only you can attract the com further communication so this two is a etiquette invite other others in com conversation when people are not taking part in conversation with you actively you are supposed to invite them with asking such questions which they have where they have the answer of those all so it is up to you how you are inviting those all in the conversation also ask questions the same i said give people a chance to answer and make sure you listen it too is very much important when you are raising such questions such questions where listeners are responding you in a form of an answer you must have time to listen them if you will not listen they will feel you are not you are not attentive to give importance to their words the next one is re respect other people's opinion it too is very much important whatever thoughts they have whatever knowledge they have you are not supposed to judge them then and there you are supposed to promote them yes you have if you are quite perfect in knowledge if you are very much well in language it's up to you how to convert their opinion how to convert how to change their opinion from one aspect to different but you should not make them wrong with their own, with with their, with their opinion in any state the next one is don't train on someone's parade this this is all about when they say you are not supposed to interrupt in between do not be a know it all means even when you are the most knowledgeable person there are someone who is more knowledgeable than you so please do not be know it all a kind of person don't make personal disagreement when you are showing you up opposition about a thought that is about the thought only not about the person so personal disagreement should not come in picture when you are when you are a part of conversation and the last one is long conversation were never meant to be easy so in that state you must be very much careful with the communication so these are the 10 different etiquettes the 10 etiquettes of communication given by peter murphy peter murphy okay so we'll cover here up to this uh, slide only in this video very soon i'll upload the next one so till then take care bye bye